and that is going to be the LSU Tigers. Uh, of course, uh, the Tigers down in Baton Rouge. LSU heads into year two of the Brian Kelly era. The win total sits at nine and a half. To go over is minus 120, under minus 110. Their odds to win the SEC West, plus 200. The odds to win the SEC overall, plus 450. And I'll toss these in as well on each one. The odds to make the playoff, plus 325. Odds to win the national title, plus 1,200. Now, I did like the over on this total a lot more when it opened you know, months ago at 8.5. Uh, LSU, a lot of hype this season. Of course, they returned Jalen Daniels at quarterback, but they also returned Garrett Nussmeyer, backup quarterback, who could likely start at just a bunch of different P5 programs this season. Uh, along with that, you know, they've got a super talented wide receiver course, some absolute dogs on defense for defensive coordinator Matt House. Kyle, I'm going to start with you on this. Is the hype warranted for LSU? Is this a team that could make a national championship run this season? Yeah, I mean, could they? Of course, uh, they have enough talent. Uh, you know, if you look at LSU kind of strengths and weaknesses, Daniels was far better than I expected in year one. I think we all agree with that. Uh, great depth at quarterback. Those linebackers are fantastic. Perkins is great. Spates is going to help out a lot. Um, the question for me is whether they can uh, reach that upside. They're going to have to get some kind of running game other than Jaden Daniels. I don't think he running all the time should be the answer. The other thing is, and Parker talks about this quite a bit with other teams as well, special teams here for LSU, a real concern. Uh, they're going to lose a game or two that they probably shouldn't lose. I think it's tough when you're playing in the SEC to have such bad special teams and be able to make it uh, to the playoffs. Certainly, are they capable of it? Uh, yes. I think the LSU game at Ole Miss is a really interesting one to me. I think uh, Ole Miss has a lot of talent. LSU plays the week before against Arkansas. We know they're big rivals. So, uh, you know, winning at Ole Miss isn't going to be particularly easy. Uh, we know that there's several other games on the LSU schedule that are massive games, but I think that Ole Miss game a bit more uh, intriguing than some people would think. Futures-wise for me, uh, you know, certainly they have a shot. I don't think their their shot to win the SEC is worth uh, the plus 450. I think there's enough teams in the SEC that have a real shot at this. Um, I, I think I would pass. Uh, you know, I'm not going to bet the win total either. I agree with Gary. If it were eight and a half, I'd bet the over. Uh, too much talent here. But at nine and a half, I think it's fair. I, I do, too. Nine and a half is where I thought it should be, you know, back when it was released in March. Uh, you brought up the schedule, of course. You know, Florida State out of conference to open the season. You got three road games in four weeks. Uh, that's going to Mississippi State. You got Missouri and Ole Miss. You got Arkansas thrown in the middle of that uh, in Baton Rouge. And then, of course, they get Alabama, Florida, and Texas A&M in November. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty rough schedule. Uh, I don't like the secondary a lot, but, you know, there is talent there. They've also on defense got Mason Smith, Harold Perkins. Uh, you know, the quarterbacks on the opposing teams may not have a long time to throw anyway. So maybe the secondary doesn't necessarily matter. Um, Parker, you know, over to you. The postgame win expectancy last season, uh, per the numbers over at CFB Data, they had LSU at 7.92 and 4.08 in the regular season. Uh, they won two games with a less than 50% postgame win expectancy. The schedule isn't easy. Are you buying the Bayou Bengals here? One shout out to uh, the first thing that I think about when I think about handicapping LSU for this season is uh, our, our friend, friend of the show, Clark, Bo Clark Brooks at SEC Stack Hat was tracking how many times Brian Kelly said the word concerned about his defense and about the transfers. If that tells you anything, that's a red flag right there. I think one of my issues with LSU <clears throat> excuse me, I think one of my issues with LSU is going to end up being the fact that they may have hit their ceiling last year and gotten a lot of help in a, in a, in a season where things weren't going as well as they looked. Um, if you look at their just fundamentals uh, towards the end of the season, you know, eighth in EPA per play margin, 18th on offense, 29th on defense. But you look at that split on offense, 30th in EPA per pass, 16th in EPA per rush. Let me give you just a few stats here that, again, bear with me, theme of the season. Parker's going to say some random stats and then paint a narrative out of it. But um Difference in rushing success rate with and without a blown block on a play. So when things are going well, how much of a benefit is that to LSU's rushing game? Plus 48.1 percentage points. That's seventh in the nation. Uh, Jaden Daniels last year designed quarterback success rate. 58.1% was third in the nation. Um, but what's really concerning, so is they last season were already kind of unsustainably maxing out when they had good blocks. 
Uh, Jaden Daniels with his legs created a lot of value. That's known now. Defenses are going to be able to adapt. And Jaden Daniels, for how elusive he is, the pressure there is actually not great. He is one of the top three in the nation worst at uh, converting sacks to pressures. 41.7% of pressures ended with a sack for Jaden Daniels, and his average interception distance was one of the lowest in the nation. So you compare that with, like, you know, um, uh, Hooker at Tennessee and Max Duggan at TCU. I was going to say Joe Milton. I just can't get him out of my brain. <laughs> Hooker at Tennessee last year, Max Duggan at TCU last year. Um, those guys had average interception depth of like 28.1 yards, right? They're chucking it. There's no decision. 50-50 ball, you're going to lose some of those. Jaden uh, Daniels' average interception depth was like seven yards last season. That was like one of the lowest five in the nation. So he's throwing, making bad decisions in conflict. He's not avoiding sacks, and he's still creating a ton of volume with his leg. 58.1% success rate uh, on, on rushes there. So I'm a little bit worried about the sustainability of that offense. I think there are some dudes on defense, but if you remember, Gary, the Harold Perkins game was the Arkansas remember when he was an absolute oh, yeah. monster lsu very easily could have lost that game oh, yes. um that that was not decisive by any stretch and i think that was an arkansas backup um or not not i think that was that was an arkansas backup quarterback yeah. so uh, i think that maybe they're a little spread too thin like butter on too much toast uh last season eight and a half was an intriguing number but i don't like the the conference and how it breaks their schedule for a future here the nine and a half number is a little too much with how tenuous this offense is and how many times brian kelly has said that he's concerned about his defense i, I think you're right i mean they did catch some teams everything was uh right place right time right for them because auburn was definitely down uh you know mississippi state was the, about the same and i expect them to be about the same this year uh i think ole miss little down when they caught them. I, I think everything just kind of worked perfectly for them uh, last season. If I had to guess, I would go under the nine and a half. I think nine is the number. If this thing ends up sitting at nine, uh, I would stay away from it. But, uh, you know, I, I took over eight and a half. I'll probably take under nine and a half uh, and just see if I can middle this thing. <laughs>